In this video, we're going to go over some differentiation formulas, particularly if you're studying derivatives in calculus. So if you have a sheet of paper with you, feel free to get ready to take down some notes. So the first thing you want to be familiar with is the derivative of a constant. The derivative of a constant is always a zero. The next formula you need to know is the power rule or the derivative of a power function. Here we have a variable raised to a constant. It's going to be that constant times the variable raised to the n minus one. So for instance, the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. The derivative of x to the fourth is four x cubed. The derivative of x to the fifth is five x to the fourth. So that's how you can employ the power rule to find de derivatives of functions like this. Now, instead of having a variable raised to a constant, what if we have a constant raised to a variable? The derivative of a to the x is going to be a to the x times ln a. Now, the reason why we get that is because the derivative of x is one. But let's say we have the derivative of a to the u, where a is a constant, but u is a function of x. This is going to be a to the u times the derivative of u times ln a. Here we would have the derivative of x, but that's just going to be one. Now, if you ever get this, the derivative of a variable raised to a variable, this, rather than having a formula, you need to employ a process called logarithmic differentiation. And I have a video on YouTube that covers that. So if you go to the YouTube search bar and type in logarithmic differentiation, organic chemistry tutor, you should see a video that will come up and explain how to do problems like this. Next up, we have something called the constant multiple rule. So if you have, if you're trying to find the derivative of a function multiplied by some constant C, it's simply going to be that constant times the derivative of that function. So for instance, let's say if we want to find the derivative of 5x to the 4. We know the derivative of x to the 4, but we can rewrite this as 5 times the derivative of x to the fourth. And using the power rule, we know this is going to be 5 times 4x cubed, which becomes 20x cubed. The next formula you need to be familiar with is the power rule. So if we have two functions, u and v, and they're multiplied to each other, the derivative of the product of these two functions is going to be u prime v plus uv prime. So it's the derivative of u times v plus u times the derivative of v. Next up, we have the quotient rule. So here we have a fraction of two functions or a division of two functions. And it's going to be v u prime minus u v prime over v squared. So that's the formula associated with the quotient rule. Now sometimes you may need to find the derivative of a composite function. In this case, you need to use the chain rule. So let's say we have f of g of u. We want to find the derivative of that. So first, we're going to find the derivative of the outer function f. We're going to keep the inside part the same, and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside part. That is the derivative of g. And then we'll multiply it by the derivative of the inside of g, which is u, so that will be times u prime. Now you might see the chain rule represented as a function of x instead of u. So let's say if you have this f of g of x. It's going to be the derivative of the outside function, 
we'll keep the inside part the same, and then times the derivative of the inside function. Now the derivative of x is 1, so there's no point writing that. It would just be times 1. So if you have x, this is all you need. But if you have a function u, or a function like where u is a function of x, you're also going to have u prime at the end. So keep that in mind. So you got to differentiate the outer function f and then work your way towards the middle, then g and then u. Now for those of you who want additional example problems on this, check out the links in the description section below. Now let's continue. Let's talk about another form of the chain rule when it's combined with the power rule. So let's say we want to find the derivative of the function f of x, but it's raised to the n. So first we're going to focus on the outside part. We're going to keep the inside part the same. So it's going to be n times f of x to the n raised to the n minus 1. Much like the power rule, where it was n x raised to the n minus 1. But we do have a function on the inside. It's not just x. It's a function of x. So now we got to find the derivative of the inside. So we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So this combines the power rule with the chain rule. Another formula that's associated with the chain rule is this one. dy dx is equal to dy du times du over dx. Now let's talk about the derivative of logarithmic functions. So let's say we want to find the derivative of log base a of u, where u is a function of x. It's going to be u prime over u ln a. If we want to find the derivative of the natural log of u, keep in mind the base of a natural log is e. It's going to be u prime over u. It's the same as this one. The only issue is ln e is equal to 1, so you could write it as just u on the bottom. So those are the two formulas you need to be familiar with when finding the derivatives of logarithmic functions. Now let's focus on trig functions. The derivative of sine of u is going to be cosine u times u prime. Now if you just have sine x, the derivative of sine x is simply cosine x. You could think of it as cosine x and the derivative of x is 1, so it's just cosine x. But let's say if u was x squared. If you want to find the derivative of sine x squared, it's going to be cosine x squared and then times the derivative of x squared, which will be 2x. So this is the u part and this is the u prime part. That's why I like to write it in this format. It reminds you that you'll need to employ the chain rule if you have something other than x as the angle. Now, the derivative of cosine u, this is going to be negative sine u times u prime. The derivative of tangent of u is secant squared times u prime. Now for cotangent, it's going to be negative cosecant squared, and as always, times u prime. Now the next two that you need to know 
are the derivative of secant and the derivative of secant's cousin or cosecant and they're quite similar if there's a c in front typically it's going to have a negative sign the derivative of secant is you know what let's change this let's change it from x to a u the derivative of secant u is going to be secant u tangent u times u prime the derivative of cosecant u is negative cosecant u cotangent u times u prime now the next set of formulas you need to be familiar with are the inverse trig formulas so let's start with the derivative of the inverse of sine of u so that's u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared now just for comparison purposes if you have the inverse sine of x it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared because the derivative of x is 1 you're gonna have that there but if you have u you're gonna have u prime instead of 1 so make sure you're mindful of that difference now the derivative for the inverse cosine of u is going to be very similar to the derivative of sine the only difference is it's going to have a negative sign but everything else is going to be the same now let's move to the arctangent function so the derivative of inverse tan of u it's going to be u prime over 1 plus u squared now for arc cotangent it's going to be negative u prime over 1 plus u squared Next up, we have inverse secant. And the formula for that is going to be u prime over u square root u squared minus 1. And for inverse cosecant, it's negative u prime over u square root u squared minus 1. So those are the formulas for the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. So that's it for this video. So if you're studying for a derivatives test, at least you know the most common formulas that you'll need and that you're going to be tested on. So hopefully you wrote those down and thanks for watching.